Thank you everybody for being here. Um, it's one of the happiest occasion uh, in all of our lives because my best, best friend publicly announced that he's his calling. Um, the words I have for Mano today is John 15, 16. It says, uh, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you uh, and appointed you to go and bear the fruits and that your fruits should abide and whatever you ask in my in the father's name with me he will give it to you so that is the verse I have for you pastor Ank was asking what do I call Manu at home I call him deputy Jesus <laughs> he's always preaching to me <laughs> so we all call him lovingly DP at home <laughs> But he's my best friend, and I'm so happy for him. Uh, his passion has always been learning the Word of God and teaching it, uh, sh learning the mysteries of the Word of God. So just a correction, he did his master's in one year, not because he was running a race, but because he was so passionate about it, he couldn't stop, and he went at full speed and with the greatest honor, and I am so proud of it, I had to tell it out over here. <laughs> So that is, and Amano has been always persistent, and he is uh, brilliant. He has a brilliant mind and good memory that not comes with, uh, that doesn't uh, diminish with age. I don't know how that happens, but God has blessed him abundantly, and I hope so he uses it completely for his kingdom. He's passionate about apologetics, so I challenge the church to question him about things to question him about difficult questions so that he would go back, research, and come back better person to answer the questions that the world puts out to him. His passion is to take the church to his workplace, and he's done it. Uh, I, I have to tell that he has a blog called Hidden Treasures he started when Reuben was a baby. He started it for Reuben. It's just a minute, a message a day, and there are hundreds of messages there. So if you all are interested, go take some time and read The Hidden Treasures. And then Hack Farmers is another passion where he brings the uh, word to the workplace. And it stopped because of COVID, but we are looking forward to starting it again. Uh, again, I'm so happy for my husband. <laughs> Firstly, I'd like to say congratulations, Dada. I'm so very proud of you for being blessed and allowed to have such a prestigious ordination. I'd like to make a point that this ceremony is not just for show. My dad truly does spend hours on hours studying God's word to be edified with biblical knowledge and wisdom, whether it is graduating DTS with a Master of Biblical and Theological Studies, leading milk to meat every week, or just for personal growth, my dad is firmly rooted in God's word. My dad is my role model, and I look up to him in almost everything he does. He is a go-getter, a hard worker, a man of God, and a great dad. He has inspired me when I'm older to get my own master's in theology and strengthen my walk with Christ. Dad, I continue walking with the Lord. Continue having that burning, fiery passion you have for God. Continue to push us to be our best and continue to always put God first, like you always do in work, at home, or in the church. Dad, I love you. I pray God gives you your heart's desires and wants you to be a preacher of his word wherever you go and blesses you beyond measure. Thank you. Uh, so a few notes about my dad is that he is really caring. So yesterday I fell on the basketball court at my school. My pinky fell and it it's a little swollen still, but he came, the, the point is, he came right away and he fixed me up. He helped me ice it and he took time out of his day, which was a woke day, and to help me. He reads the Bible with me every morning and also prays with me. He guides me spiritually, mentally, and physically. Spiritually, he teaches me the Bible. Mentally, with homework and mass uh, subjects, really and physically with basketball. He helps me so much, I don't know what I would do without him, and thank you for this time. So 
So I'd like to, I should do this in two parts. I'll have a few people to thank and then I'll share a closing thought of mine and uh, after that, uh, you know, we'll have the closing prayer and benediction. So first and foremost, I'll actually do it. The first part is actually thanking a few people and then um, share that, share that thought of mine. So first and foremost, I want to thank um, God, my father, for his uh, unfailing, unending love. Um, since I lost my dad when I was age nine, he has truly been a father to the fatherless. That verse is true in my life and the life of my brothers and my siblings, uh, Ramo, David, and Mary as well. I um, want to thank God for our Lord Jesus for his grace and God the Holy Spirit for his guiding presence in my life uh, and in the life of my family. I uh, want to thank Sangeetha for the woman that she is and the wife that she is, modeling the love of Christ in um, not just words but in action and practically with a captivating love that... Uh, um, you know, I can truly say that I'm highly favored and blessed of the Lord who makes every decision she makes. She asks one question, what would Jesus do? And responds in like manner. Uh, my beloved sons, uh, Reuben and Etai, I'm so proud of you for the love that they show towards me, which teaches me how, how I should be loving God our Father. Uh, and I would be remiss if uh, I don't thank my parents, uh, like Dr. R.A.C. Paul and Iris Paul, Dr. Iris Paul, my mom, whom you heard earlier, who instilled in me and my brothers, Remo and Mary, uh, Remo and David and my sister Mary, the necessity for us to be missionaries in all walks of life. And so I thank God for that godly heritage that God has blessed me with. I would also like to thank my in-laws, Mr. Johnson Tarian and Mrs. Gracie Johnson for raising Sangeeta in the fear of the Lord and for being more than in-laws as Papa and Mommy to me and wonderful grandparents to Reuben and Etai. I'm humbled and honored uh, and want to thank each member of the esteemed ordination committee um, for the grilling that I had with the ordination interview. <laughs> and uh, I am thankful to God for them and their lives, Dr. Ramesh Richard, the, com the convener, and his wife, Bonnie, uh, for joining us and for bringing the words, uh, word of God to us today. I pray that God will bless you richly and continue to reach the billions that you have envisioned to reach by 2030 through the Reachability Program. Uh, Dr. Samuel Madhavaraj, uh, who's instrumental in putting this whole program together, uh, but also has been a strong source of an encouragement and an amazing mentor to me. And uh, uh, I remember when we used to have milk to meet Bible studies and Pastor Madhavaraj and I will be there and Sangeetha or maybe just the family and no one else will be there. Pastor Madhavaraj will be like, you know, no one has come for, uh, for the Bible study. And uh, we would always encourage each other and say that the majority is here because we've gathered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, so thank you for being there throughout my, my time uh, at ACFI and continuing to be with us and also for Julie Ante and for the encouragement that she is to us. Uh, Dr. Nainenberg, Pastor Dr. Samson Parekh for his shepherding of the church of God, our church, and his personal friendship and support in all matters of life. He's uh, always been supportive of all things and to me and my family. And so thank you so much, uh, Pastor uh, Parekh, and we love you so dearly as a family. Uh, Dr. Nainan Verbeez, who's not here, a dear pastor of us, uh, but who was part of the committee as well, and I want to thank him too, in, even in his absence here. And Pastor Nathan, for your brotherly love and the mentorship and the strong friendship that we have, I really thank you for that. Uh, each member of the ACFI Church, the Austin Christian Fellowship of India, given the interest of time, I don't have the time to name each of in, one of you, otherwise I would uh, do so, but you've been instrumental in our lives and we deeply love you. Uh, and we give thanks to God on, upon every remembrance of every one of you in our lives. Uh, the fellow your love that you express uh, within the body of Christ is commendable and is evident from the manner and the voluntary nature in which you all jump up and serve. Uh, without uh, requesting or expecting any recognition in return. And so special thanks to all the volunteers who work tirelessly in putting this event together in uh, an event wherein Jesus Christ himself is glorified. Uh, additionally, to all my friends uh, and uh, who have joined us here personally and those who have joined us remotely, uh, the family in India, uh, thank you for the friendship that you show unto each one of us, many of who who actually stick closer than a brother unto me. And to the Hill Country Bible Church uh, leadership team, Pastor Danny Box, uh, Sister Jane Chandler, and Pastor Noel, Pastor Isom, uh, and all who graciously allowed us to use this beautiful facility, thanking for making it possible so that we could actually worship God and worship our Lord Jesus Christ in this solemn event. With that said, the thank yous are done. And so uh, now when I graduated from DTS, an amazing uh, university, uh, with godly professors who taught me to teach truth and to love well. 
uh, with my Master of Biblical and Theological Studies, some friends asked me, uh, should we address you as reverend or pastor? Uh, and I responded that reverend or pastor is too low a title for me. Thou shall hereafter, reverend, ref address me as your most highly, uh, most excellency, your grace. Uh, I'm, I'm just... Uh, uh, levity aside, uh, you know, recognizing post-graduation, I recognized how little I know of the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I responded by saying, I've graduated from being a servant to a slave, a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. As Paul, Apostle Paul, was a bond servant, I am a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I, recognizing the solemn responsibility as an ordained minister of the word of God, my prayer is this, and I would request that each of you continue to pray with me as I pray this, that I'll be a husband to Sangeetha, loving her sacrifice, sacrificially as Christ loves the church. Uh, I'll be a father to Reuben and Etai, loving them and teaching them the fear of the Lord, just as God the Holy Father desires of his children. I'll be a servant of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, pr providing spiritual fodder from his spirit-inspired, infallible, inerrant word to grow the body of Christ and protect it from the ravenous wolves that come to seek and to creep in and spy out the liberty that we have in Jesus Christ. Most importantly, sans titles, for there are no titles on epitaphs. I would like to, and I pray that I will be a nameless servant of God, not seeking ever to build towers that will bring self-glory, but instead through my life and my work, and through the life of my family and our work, people will come to know and believe in the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ, for only by believing in his name can, can mankind be saved. And so I plead and I will pray that if anybody over here has not believed in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, this is that day that you can be born again into that kingdom. And so I pray, I ask you that, and I, and I beseech you, and I, I pray that you be reconciled unto God, that I will be a nameless servant like that of the nameless servant of Abraham who sought, fought, found, and brought back the bride for the son of the master. And I'll be the nameless Samaritan who loved without reservations and tended to the needs of those who are hurting. And daily I pray that by the help of the Holy Spirit of God, I will mortify the desires of my flesh, the lust of my eyes, the lust of my flesh, and the pride of life, and present my life as a living sacrifice, conforming daily into the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until the day I die, or until the Lord returns, whichever is earlier, that I will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of grace and eternal life, by my life first and then by my lips, so that those who are lost without Jesus will believe in his name and receive the spirit of adoption into God's family. So to that end, I can boldly declare in my end of life that I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith as a born servant and son of the Most High, our Lord Jesus Christ. So help me, God, and I want you to pray with me and keep me in my prayers and keep our family in your prayers.